Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back inside the MGM Grand here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing presented by Bob Arum's Top Rank. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior welterweight division. Our judges at ringside, Max DeLuca, Dave Moretti, and Patricia Morse-Jarman. The man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Tony Weeks. This is boxing. This is Top Rank. And this is the main event! Fighting out of the blue corner. Presented in association with Debella Entertainment. He weighed in at 140.9 pounds, wearing silver trunks with red trim. He brings a record of 21 wins, two losses, 14 wins by way of knockout. From Toledo, Ohio, Sonny Pretty Boy Fredrickson! Fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in at 140.8 pounds, wearing black trunks. He brings a record of 29 wins, one loss, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. From Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Alex Sosedo! Okay, gentlemen, you both receive your instruction in your dress room. Okay, right here was good. Right here was good. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. You're wondering about the height advantage when they come together there. It's 6-1 for Fredrickson. It's a 5-10 for Saucedo. Remember, you can join in ESPN.HearMeCheer.com. Your voice will be heard in this fanless atmosphere. That's ESPN.HearMeCheer.com. Dot com. Round one of ten, Saucedo and Fredrickson, and they waste no time. Fredrickson does have a three-inch height advantage, but he doesn't always use it. He's a guy who sacrifices his height. He'll stay inside. He doesn't really defend himself well inside, but he's not. He doesn't. He's not disciplined on the outside with his height and we've well, talked about to, Salcedo to, wanting to be smarter but that doesn't mean you go. take away his instinct of stop, being stop, aggressive stop. because on, this is go. actually a fight where you want him to be inside against a taller guy who can't defend himself so it's going to be interesting to see this fight unfold as you see right out the gate you see Salcedo going straight at Fredrickson Using his jab, using some good head movement, placing body shots. He's doing a great job at the moment. Looks like Salcedo to me, but he's not getting hit so easily on the way in like he was before. You can see Salcedo has a little bit more responsibility with his defense. He's just not walking in. You see him, he's fainting. Got hit with an uppercut right there. But I see a little bit of difference in him right away. He's touching Fredrickson with that left hand and trying to pop and sneak him right in between. Good work on the outside of the jab right now Fredrickson. Yeah, Fredrickson right now is doing a good job and staying relaxed and staying composed. Using the jab on the outside, Tess. Yeah, there he's fighting the taller man, but then stepping in with a right hand with Saucedo. And then a combination, and he rocks him back against the ropes. Good work that time by Alex Saucedo. Digs to the body with that left hand straight, right comes in. This is a good surge here by Saucedo. Mention the changes that he's been working on with his style and of course who he surrounds himself with. Here's what Alex Saucedo 
told us. End of one. In his career, when he had the trilogy against War, Bernard Hopkins went from being the executioner to B-Hop. That extended his career. And Tim Bradley was always a power boxer. He had one fight where he chose to brawl. He went back to box and he went on to win five or six fights. And the rest is history. It's Mr. Provoden. Oh, yeah. And the impact that had on your career, Timmy. Tim, there was a right hand in that first round, in that final minute, that got to Fredrickson pretty good. Yeah, got Fredrickson in trouble. This right hand right there. What did Fredrickson do? He came out with a hook. You cannot hook from the middle and from straight back when your back is against the ropes. And that's the mistake that Fredrickson made right there. Hook from the middle and got hit with a straight right hand from Salcedo. We told you they were wasting no time. Salcedo did what he typically does with the power punches. He landed 30 of 56 in that first round, and now he's at it again as he follows Frederick a straight back combination, include the right hand, and then two to the belt line. This fight is just over in the best of matter of time. I mean, Frederickson is a tough kid. He's taking a lot of shots right now, but he can't even breathe because Alcedo is on him constantly. See, one of the misnomers is that if a, if a fighter who's a pressure fighter modifies or adds wrinkles to his game, then that means he's going to lose some type of aggression. That's not true. I can count on one hand the amount of times that Salcedo's been hitting this fight. He's doing the right thing. He's making Fredrickson dance to the beat of his music and he's doing it while he's being defensively responsible, but also laying a lot of leather on the young fighter, Fredrickson. Yeah, still very fan-friendly and offensive-minded, just more refined. Listen, you're just not giving up free shots. You gotta hate to get hit. Your trainer's gotta hate to see you get hit. And, I mean, if you look at me, Tess, over the last 15 years, I was probably one of the meanest, toughest fighters, pound for pound. I wasn't giving up anything free, no. but I would be in your grill all night, all night long if I had to. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Push that one ahead. And by the way, that'll be the end of any comparison. Timmy, that'll be the end of any comparison to Alex Saucedo and Andre Ward that we ever had. I didn't mean it that way. Well, <laughs> I just want to bring the point home that it's not box or slug. It's if you know what you're doing and you're a slugger and you're an aggressive guy, you can tweak your game and work on your game and do both. You know, a lot of times we talk about Mexican fighters and we bring up Julio Cesar Chavez and we say, well, he was a straightforward fighter, but Julio Cesar Chavez had good defense. He would move his head. He would bob and weave. Yes. You know? Yes. And he still would pressure you. Start around three, Timmy Saucedo has landed 49 of 89 power punches so far tonight. Yeah, Tess, lots of pressure from Saucedo. You know, Fredrickson right here, trying to get distance, trying to get out. What does he do? Dropped his hands, going back to the ropes. And what did Saucedo do? Followed him out with a right hand and the left hook right here. And then he doubles, doubles down from the head to the body. Beautiful work from Salcedo right there. And I'm sure Bernardo is appreciated by his cornerman, Pedro and Eddie. Yes, it is, Joe. He told him, look, you've got to use your legs. Continue to move your head side to side to get inside. Work that body. Dig in there and stay low. From a world title challenger trying to get himself back in position at 140 pounds for another title shot. Of course, a lot to be determined at 140 pounds. We'll see if Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez end up in the ring together this year. We expect Postal and Ramirez to have an August date that we hope to bring you. A lot of times people equate height for physical strength, and we have to differentiate the two. Sonny Fredrickson is not a physically strong boxer. He is a tall boxer, but like I mentioned earlier, he doesn't use his reach very well. Alex Salcedo and his team, they realized that. They jumped on him right away, and right now Fredrickson has stop, no stop, stop, stop. No, don't do that. Stop. Don't do that. Here we go. You want to know when the perfect time to load up on your opponent? When you got your opponent's back against the ropes. That's the time when you can load up on your shot. You can let those power shots go with everything you got into it because he has nowhere to go. 
Alex getting caught with an uppercut coming in, leaning a little bit over that front knee, Dre. He got to be careful. Like that right there. Stop, I got you. And Salcedo got caught with that uppercut a couple times. Yeah. But if you're Salcedo, this is where the, the learning process doesn't just stop in the gym, it's also in the fight. So you got to learn to make adjustments on the fly. That's part of being a better defensive fighter. You get hit with a shot, you identify why, you make the adjustment. Right hand that comes in again from Salcedo. Alex, vamos. Trying to utilize that jab and come with the right hand from out at range. And the three here. MGM Grand Conference Center. Joe Tessator, Andre Ward, Tim Bradley calling the action. Good start to the main event for Alex Saucedo. By the way, coming up after top ranked boxing, it is Sports Center with SDP. The countdown towards the NBA Woj will have the latest. Is college football getting nervous? Reese Davis is going to join SVP to discuss that. Uh, as the parent of a college football player in the midst of COVID testing, I would tell you a firm yes on that. So that is coming up after we get done from Vegas. Round number four. You know, it's interesting, guys. I make that comment, but we have now been weeks and weeks of really embedded in what happens to put on professional sports with all the testing, time after time, and we've seen constant disruption to our cards, reshuffling of bout orders, bouts being scratched, and then tonight, uh, even a corner man who violates rules of the protocol and procedures of how they're dealing with life in the bubble, and he's out of action. So you can understand why team sports uh, not quite as bullish and confident as we were just a few weeks ago, and then there's the spike in cases throughout the Southeast. Make him find you. Fredrickson almost filled that hole with a right hand moments ago as Saucedo came forward. Back at range utilizing the jab as Saucedo continues to press forward. Nice work by Fredrickson right there. Towards the, the end of that last round, Fredrickson did some good work from the outside. And he's having some success right now from the outside now. Kind of calming down now and relaxing and starting to see the openings on Saucedo. And so utilizing that left hand every so often, splitting the guard with a right hand. And Fredrickson comes forward, tries to drive down an overhand right. Touching, up, down, up, down. Salcedo's getting touched with some shots from Fredrickson because he's leaning over his feet. Even when he has Fredrickson on the ropes, instead of staying behind his leg, he's leaning over his leg, and Fredrickson is taking advantage. Right See uppercut right took advantage, and again he comes with the right uppercut. Right yes. Yeah, you got to. Up and down what you said, Dre, you know, you got a responsibility to defense. After that offense, you got a responsibility to defense to get that head off the line. So that way you don't get hit with return fire from your opponent. But even when Salcedo is punching, he's got his head over his front foot. That's a problem. Yeah. And he keeps it right in the middle, Dre. Fredrickson doesn't have to look for Salcedo when he does that. He just lets the shot go, and Salcedo's right there to be hit. Both men digging to the body. End of four, good main event. Ha! Let's check in with Mark Kriegel. I just want to remind you that Alex Salcedo said, I'll tip my hat to Sonny Fredrickson if this goes past five. The biggest difference I've seen in Salcedo is he's stopping the head hunting. He's going to the body. Should make Timmy happy. <laughs> and well, he got a big frame to hit. And Fredrickson, six foot, six foot one. Catch him in between them big shots. He's loading up. Bernardo, what's going on in the corner of Sonny Fredrickson? Lamar Wright said, look, he's got to use his jab. He can't stand right in front of him. He's got to look for angles. I believe he's slowing down, so he's got to take advantage. Sonny just landed another right uppercut moments ago. There is the jab. 
Let's check on Andre Ward's scorecard. Three rounds to one, Alex Saucedo. And Sonny just need to get his hands going. I don't know if Sonny believes in himself, but he needs to believe in himself tonight. Let his hands go. Saucedo is right in front of him to be hit. We talk so much about this being such a career-defining fight, being so critical, comes with a lead right uppercut. Yeah, but Sonny seems like a fighter that's okay with just being, you know, uh, you know, not 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 trying to win. He's okay with just being comfortable in the fight. He needs to try to win this fight. Step outside himself tonight. Be brave in there. Let his hands go. Take chances. Keep him up, man. I think the offense of Fredrickson, when he does use it to him, is good. He's landing clean flush shots on Salcedo. The issue is defense. He gives too much back when Salcedo gets on the offense. So it's almost like you forget that Fredrickson had a moment because Salcedo steals the show. See, he's having moments like this. Why can't he just continue to have moments like this? Why does he have to go back to the ropes? You got to fight against yourself to be on those ropes. Step inside, tie up, then get back in the center of the ring. This is where he's having success right now. Keep it going. Shooting that jab from that 6-1 frame. Nice. Mm. Nice. There's and a willingness to go. There's a willingness to let the hands go. And ran with the new COVID-19 protocols. I'm in studio here in Connecticut. The other three at their home offices. Touching, touch, touch. He's got to go. Touch his gloves. That's good work. Now what do you see right now? You see Salcedo resulting back to what he always do. Come here first, he stopped moving his head. Now he's Let's taking punches on the way in. Set it up now, set it up. One of you earlier tonight mentioned that there are two fights going on. There's Saucedo against Fredrickson, and then the new Saucedo against the old Saucedo, and the deeper you get into a tougher fight, the harder it is to stay in that newer lane. Yeah, it's three fights going on. Turn, turn, One against Fredrickson, Salcedo against himself, the old self, and Salcedo against the new self. And that's what we see in the night. I think Salcedo's doing a good job tonight because the test really comes when a warrior and an aggressive fighter like Salcedo gets hit. Especially with flush shots. That's when you have a, the opportunity to have a flashback and forget everything you've been working on over the last couple of years. I haven't seen him do that tonight. Comes with a one two there. But Salcedo is starting to take some punishment now from Fredrickson because he has a willingness to let those hands go. Good headshots as Fredrickson covers up. He's got that guard down by going to the body and fills it with a left and a right. Mm. Fredrickson popping that jab off the hip, up on his toes. And Saucedo chasing him down against the ropes. Fredrickson just likes the ropes. I don't understand it. Does his best work in the center of the ring, but he just loves the ropes. Swing, 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 swing,
Nice. He touched it. He touched it. You got to go him back. The bigger shots. Let's see if he can put that forth. As Sonny Fredrickson steps out for round number seven against the former world title challenger Alex Saucedo. 29 and 1. Alex Saucedo. Sometimes, Tess, it just boils down to how bad you want it. You know, stylistically, this fight can go either way. You got the pressure fighter in South Sato, you got Fredrickson, who's the boxer. He can box his way to victory. But it's how bad do you want it, Fredrickson? That's what it boils down to here. If I'm in the corner of Fredrickson, I'm reminding my fighter that Saucedo has been cut a lot in his career. He's got a lot of stitches, a lot of scar tissue around those eyes. Let your shots go. Let's try to open something up. It's a professional prize fight. All of that is fair game. Four different fights he has suffered significant cuts in. In the best way, the most efficient way to open up those eyes, if you're in the corner of Fredrickson, and if you're Sonny Fredrickson, is the left jab. You stay at range, you stay at distance, and it's a sharp punch that could potentially open up an eye or both eyes of Salcedo. A nice right up and you got to think. Those eyes too. One, two, <laughs> yeah, that's the way you got to think when you're a professional prize fighter. For the normal person, that may sound a little off, but as a professional prize fighter, that's got to be the norm. There's the right uppercut right there that I was seeing. Fredrickson took advantage of it. Now he's back as against the ropes, and this is where he always gets himself into trouble being on the ropes against Salcedo. Just lazy fighting from Fredrickson, and that shows me that in sparring and in the gym, that kind of behavior is allowed. Because if that's not allowed, you're going to see the young fighter Fredrickson get, he's going to make haste to get his back off of the ropes. That's a spot in training camp where he's used to resting. That's a spot in training camp where he's allowed to stay there and the coach isn't demanding anything different. It's hard to demand it on fight night. During the COVID quarantine and the Glass City Boxing Gym where Fredrickson normally gets his work and that was in lockdown. That didn't open up, so there was somebody who knew who had a garage with a gym in it, so he had some private training that way. And Saucedo was back home for a little bit in Oklahoma City before he made his way out to L.A. Shift the shoulders, man. Shift the shoulders. Now Salcedo's looking to change the rhythm up a little bit. Now he's just letting his hands flow from right where they are. He's not trying to load up with a lot of shots. He's just trying to touch them. Just have Fred and keep his hands in his pocket. He goes straight back. Follow him back with that long ass right hand. Nice. Back to it. Back to it. Three two. There it goes. One two. Now one, two. Good exchanges from both fighters in this round. Keep touching him. You sure are. You gotta keep touching him. Come on, get up, stop, stop, get up. It's not by accident where it's happening in the ring. Better real estate for Fredrickson. And always willing in Saucedo. One, two, one, two. Right there. You keep dropping him off. Yeah, but one of the things that, that, that was said to us is that the footwork of Salcedo is, is better, that he's been working on his footwork. He's standing directly in front of Fredrickson. All Fredrickson got to do is release his hands, and he's going to hit him. Now he's coming forward. Short. 
Touch his hip when he come for me, sure. Move your feet a little bit. Yeah, move your feet a little bit. Set it up. Yeah. He must have heard me. Now, Danny. Now, Danny, up the tail when he come for me. Eso. Mm. So Sado came forward with the right hand. Then he ate a right uppercut himself after sending in that body shot. And there's another uppercut that time from Sonny Fredrickson. Joe Fredrickson has been landing that right uppercut all night on the chin of Salcedo. He's even been leading with the right uppercut, which is a no-no, but it's been landing. Look at this exchange in the middle of the round. Oh, yeah. The old Salcedo is back, baby. Take that jab, take your jab, take your jab, take your jab. Take your jab. Take your jab. Take your jab to get it out. Look, look, come on. Ha! Ninth round. Good work with the jab from Saucedo. Let your hands go, you're keeping them at home. Damn, man. Yeah, he's hitting is getting that hit target. With those so accurate. Yeah, he's, hit, he's hitting him flush, Joe, because look at the taller fighter, Fredrickson, and where his hands are. He's in a prayer position. He's got his hands in close, and he's not utilizing his reach or his height at all. So if you're Alex Saucedo, you do just what he did. You keep hitting him square in his face until he makes some adjustments. Six rounds to two, Saucedo, Andre's card. Six rounds to two. Boxing is not a fair game. Your opponent makes mistakes or they haven't figured something out. You don't help them out. You just keep exploiting the weakness until they make some adjustments. Falls it straight back with the right hand there. Stay the Good workmanlike performance tonight from Alex Salcedo. He's still taking some shots, not as many as he would normally take, but he's still a work in progress. Solid performance thus far tonight. Yeah, I just like what he's putting forth here in this ninth round as well. We just we describe this as being a defining round potentially for this fight, having never gone past eight, and he's getting the better of it. Yeah, he's beating the he's beating the fight out of Fredrickson. That's what he's doing. Beating the fight out of him. Oh, hold that hand out. Eso. Eso. Good work right there. Down to the body. That right hand getting under the left elbow. And now going back and he places a right hand following the path of Fredrickson. Yeah, but well, Fredrickson said, hey, I've been, I've been, you know, 10, 10 rounds three times. He ain't showing it. Salcedo ain't been past this, been, been past eight rounds. And he's showing that he has. Yeah, all of that means nothing right now. If you're Fredrickson, you need to look to land a big shot because you're, you're, you're losing this fight big. And you got one round to go. Yes, he is. So I say it'll vary up speeds that time. Touching, 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 and planting a body shot. That it's the way he looks. You look brilliant. It's a solid performance, but move, make him miss. Tenth and final round. And if Alex Saucedo can do that, he should have a secure W. No, 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 no. Don't knock down. Sigue 
¡Eso! Mm. Otra vez, Alex, otra vez, otra vez. Finta, eso, finta abajo y vas arriba. Finta abajo y vas arriba, vamos. Eso, vamos, eso. Eso, Alex. Abajo y arriba. Finta so, has landed right there over, over, over 300 punches eso, landed now as he snaps eso. back eso, Fredrickson's eso, head again. Nice right hand from Fredrickson right there. Right lead. Pick it up. Pick it up. There's been some really clean exchanges by both men. They've been landing some hard shots of one another. Back and forth action. So Sato wants another Look chance the hands at a title. Look where the hands are, Fredrickson. They've been in his chest and close to his chin all night long. That's the wrong position for a fighter with a 76-inch reach and a 4-inch reach advantage on an opponent. you sacrificed your own reach all night long, and that's why he's getting hit with flush shots. He's trying to protect that body, Dre. That's what he's trying to do. Salcedo's been going down to that body all day, all night long. He's not going to protect it that way. There's the clap, and here comes more offense with it. Final 10 seconds of the 10th and final round. A fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds here inside MGM Grand, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Max DeLuca has it 99-91. Patricia Morse Jarman has it 98-92. Dave Moretti has it 100 to 90. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision. From Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Alex Sosedo. Right here. Good, solid win for Oklahoma City's Alex Sosedo. We will hear from him next when we return to Top Rank Boxing on ESPN.